All right, let's take this fractal from Mandelbulb 3D and turn it into this object in Blender. To do this, we'll need some software. Mandelbulb 3D version 1.99, Blender 3.1 alpha or newer, and our new ply importer for Blender. All three are linked in the description, and we'll take a moment here with each of them. Mandelbulb 3D. Why version 1.99? Well, later versions are currently incompatible with the Blender importer. I'm working on a fix, and we'll update this video when it's ready. Blender 3.1 As of this recording, Blender 3.1 beta is the recommended version. Being a beta, it's located on a separate page on Blender.org. When 3.1 is officially released, I'll update this video with the changes. Download the beta and install on your machine. One last step. We need to replace the vanilla ply importer that ships with Blender. Open the folder where you installed Blender 3.1. On Windows, it's usually something like C colon, Program Files, Blender Foundation, and some version numbers if you have more than one version of Blender installed. Open the Blender 3.1 folder. Open the 3.1 folder. Open Scripts. Open Add-ons. Open I.O. Mesh Ply. Select Import Ply.py, that's hard to say, and rename it to something like Import Ply-Old.py. Now, paste or drag in the new Import Ply.py. And that's it. Let's fire up Mandelbulb and get started. Mandelbulb 3D. When preparing a fractal for export, there are a couple things that can go wrong. Hopefully these tips will make your point cloud experience more enjoyable. Use an M3i. Whenever possible, use an M3i instead of an M3p. Every time we switch from the main window to the B-Tracer module, the main display gets wiped, and we'll need it back to adjust the colors. Much faster to just reload the M3i as needed, instead of having to hit Compute. Scale and Position Many times I've been excited to load in a favored formula, only to have nothing show up in the B-Tracer preview window. It's usually there, just not visible. You will spend a lot of quality time with these sliders. And be aware that some formulas just don't work, no matter how you scale or pan. Color this is a big one. Take our example fractal here. We see some reds, some muted purples. See how this goes with no changes at all. And we have mustard. Why is that? Our source image didn't seem to have any yellow at all. And there is the main drawback of this method. Let's reload and have a look at the lighting tab. There you are. Click Object, and ah, we have a bitmap. B-Tracer simply ignores any mapping and just uses the diffuse colors right here. Reload, Lighting tab. Let's see our palette. Looks like this middle channel is dominating. Let's change that. And now we should see mostly purple, right? <laughs> oh no. So what gives? I eventually found that this color variation on Z slider is the culprit. Leaving it at the default value like we did pretty much freezes the color no matter what you do to the palette. So tweak that Z slider until we start to get visible color variations down in these wrinkles. Every fractal you load will be a little different, and we'll need this process done to them to get them fine-tuned. Of course, once they're over in Blender, we can add the full arsenal of materials to them, so if the colors aren't exactly right, eh, don't sweat it too much. We just want some kind of color variation going on in there. There we go. That's not solid yellow. Let's go ahead and export this. With an eye on our vertex count, let's turn up the resolution to 300 cubed. Change this to mesh as ply. 
choose a location and a name. Yeah, let's call it Dave. And hit generate. That looks good. About 300,000 vertices, which isn't bad. I'd say we're ready to move into Blender. Open Blender 3.1 and open the example.blend file from the repository. Let's cover two Blender specific things right quick. Go up to Edit, Preferences. On Add ons, check Enabled Add ons Only and type Node in the search bar. We just want to verify that Node Wrangler is enabled, and your screen should look just like this one. If for any reason Node Wrangler doesn't appear, uncheck Enabled Only and search Node again, and then enable it. Cool. The next topic is the camera. This rectangle means we're in camera view. If we rendered right now, it would look just like this. Hit numpad 0 and we're out of camera and into the world. Roll the middle mouse wheel to zoom, hold the wheel to orbit, oh, numpad 0. Again, just toggles back and forth. Okay, let's do this. Left click to select the default fractal, note the orange outline, and press X or delete to delete it. Let's turn off our plane for a moment. Go to File, Import, Stanford Ply, and load in our new point cloud. Dave? Dave. When this loads, you'll see why we turned off the plane. Mandel bulb clouds are usually pretty small. <laughs> Hit S to scale, then R, Y, 180 to rotate, R, Z, G, you grab, Z, move it up, finally R and X to rotate into position. Okay, click the shading tab up here. Click the little circle icon and select our reverse material. Click the geometry nodes tab. Click new, and then the little icon here and select geometry nodes.001. Click the shaded tab up here and just like that. Let's adjust our cube scale. Hit Shift A to add and to add a utilities random value node. Change the type to vector and connect it to scale. Slight variation. This takes our size from the cube and randomly scales that value from minimum to max. 0 to 1.0 in our case here. Drop our max here to tighten the object. That looks good. Click the Layout tab up here. Let's turn our plane back on. Hold the middle mouse button to navigate around. Click the Rendered tab up here and turn the overlays back off. That looks real good. Whoops, I crashed Blender and had to follow this tutorial to rebuild the scene. Well, hey, it works. Uh, yes, as this is a beta version of Blender, it's good to save this on occasion. Control S is our friend. All right. The moment of truth. Hit of 12 to render, and hopefully it won't take too long. And now, a word from our sponsor. Oh, that wasn't bad. Well, there it is. Go up to Image, Save As, choose Location and Name, and click Back to Previous to go back. Well, congratulations. That's the basic workflow. In part two, we'll dig a little deeper into materials and how to use different primitives without crashing Blender. We will see you in part two.